Uh, hello, this is uh, David Birch at Star Pass School of Navigation with a note about uh, wind computations um, and in particular addressing one of the pr problems in our workbook, our marine weather course workbook. And the normal issue with uh, true wind computations is we have, uh, for example, we're, we're, we're normally wanting to find the true wind given the apparent wind. So here's a case where the boat speed is six knots. We have a, a wind of 14.9 knots, apparent wind at 49 degrees, um, apparent wind angle. And we need to know uh, what the true wind is in order to um, anticipate... Um, the marine weather and uh, that's always we need to know how the true winds changing now that's a normal operation and there's several tools for solving that here's one of them that you can download for free at starpath.com uh, and i'll put a link to that in the um, in the uh, description and this is a nice one because you can play around with it you can either put in the values digitally or you can um, uh, you know, you can uh, solve it this way just by uh, doing this. So you can, it's a good way to study how these things vary. Like there, is that a beam wind? Or in other words, you can think through the questions. Is, that's a true wind on the beam. There's the apparent wind on the beam. And there's a wind aft and so forth. And so you can do that. But that's not the question at hand. The question at hand is the reverse of that. Namely, we know or anticipate what the new true wind will be, and we want to know the apparent wind. For example, you could get a forecast, and that's a problem we're going to do. Now, we're going to get a forecast that the wind's going to increase a lot, and we know what direction it is. And what we want to know in anticipation to the sea state and uh, what kind of sails we're going to need, or even this, by the way, is equally important question to power boaters doesn't matter sail or power when you have a big forecast coming in you want to know um, you want to know what the apparent wind is going to be and and for example it's equal why it's more important to sail or I mean equally important anyway to power boaters is because we control the apparent wind uh, by our own speed and heading relative to the wind and power boaters can go fast so it could be if they got some strong wind coming in depending on what direction it is relative to where they want to go, they can't go fast. And so when you, when you use this technique just to uh, figure out the, the anticipated apparent wind, then you can plan and be in control and know what's coming and not have to figure things all out in a few minutes, uh, you know, when it all hits you. So that's the idea. So in this case, we would have a question like, you know, suppose the uh, suppose we anticipate that the apparent wind is going to be, you know, 12 knots on the beam, and we're going six knots. Or let's just say here, um, let's just say we're going uh, that that you know that we're going 11 knots, and we expect 12 knots on the beam. What's the apparent wind going to be? Well, the answer is 16.8, and uh, and it's going to be at an apparent wind angle 46. Now, this is I'm saying on the beam. This would be see you can put in real headings and so forth. So this so first of all, this tool here is one way to solve that problem, uh, and so it's a PC. It's a PC program. It'll run probably on you know in a Mac on um, OverDrive or you know crossover or something like that. But it's basically a free PC tool. Now, so, but that's not, uh, I want to go solve this uh, maybe a, a couple different ways. And I think, let's see here. Yeah, let me just take this aside. Well, this, this, that's another version of it. And here, let's go old-fashioned school. So here, uh, let's do this. Let's say, and the problem, the ac I'm going to work the actual problem in the book that we've got is we're actually cruising along at something like a course of 200 degrees, true, and we're running at 12 knots and, um, and in some kind of moderate breeze. And it doesn't, the problem doesn't even say sailor power. But but then we anticipate we're going to get 25 knots out of the west. 
Okay, so right now, presumably our course, our intended course is 200, and uh, we're going to, we anticipate getting 25 knots out of the west. Well, we know that we're probably going to have to slow down. So the question is that we just pause to ourselves or pose to ourselves that I'm going, I'm going to keep my course I want 200 degrees. So I'm going to be going seven knots and uh, on a, a heading of 200 degrees, and the wind is coming in from the west at 25 knots. Now, now, in those circumstances, what will the apparent wind speed and angle be? So that's what we want to solve. And it's, it's, this is a, a vector problem. It's just kind of working it backwards in a sense. So let's just look at that solution. So basically, we're going to have some, let me just sketch it out here. We're going to be uh, going like this, and this is uh, seven knots like this at something like 200. And that's seven. Um, and then the wind's going to be coming in at 25 this way. Okay, so we're going to end up with a vector that looks something like this, right, where this is, this is the 7 knots we're going in direction 200. This is going to be the 25 knot winds this way, and then this is going to be the apparent wind we want right here, this direction. And keep in mind how this works. We're actually going this way, right? We're headed, we're headed that way, but the wind that we're creating, our wind, we're all dealing with all wind here now, not currents or anything else, we're dealing with wind. So when we're going this way, it's effectively standing still with the wind blowing this way. So what's happening then is we have a vector equation. We got RS going this way, then we got the true wind going that way, right? So that's a S, you know, that's a S vector and that's a true wind vector. And so this plus this is the same as the vector going this way, which is the apparent wind vector. So the formula is here that the apparent wind vector is just equal to the S plus the true wind. Now that's pictorially what that looks like. But now let's look at the standard ways that you solve that. And then when you're doing that, here's the thing here. This angle here, theta, or that's called theta, that's the true wind angle. And that's a, that's a true wind angle on the boat. Or, you know, if this is coming in from, the, you know, um, we can figure that out. And this is the, here's alpha, that's the apparent wind angle. And, the, and you'll notice that the true wind angle is always aft of the apparent wind angle. So in this case, we have a, a true wind angle. Uh, Well, this is this is 90, and this is uh, 20. This is 180. I mean, this is 200. So that's 20. That's 20. That's 70. And then we have some angle here. This is going to be smaller. So the 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 the, the parent wind angle is always going to be forward. Parent wind angle is always forward to the true wind. Just keeping, you know, just keep in mind. Let's say you're standing dead in the water, and you have wind wind on your uh, wind on the beam and then you just start uh, p turn on the engine and start going and what happens is as you increase your speed the wind keeps going forward and by the time you're going 40 miles an hour the wind is dead ahead straight in your face no matter what it was to begin with so forth okay so that's the vector problem so let's solve that here um, and then you could use almost any kind of tool this thing or you know a set of a set of these or you know this should be real or or you can use you know things like that any kind of protractor any kind of protractor will solve it or you can use the compass roses on the charts without you know without any of these just uh, parallel rulers but this is a, a plain paper problem so i'm going to define north with that line and then i'll just make some center section here like this Okay, so that's our graph paper, that's our paper, and then I'm going to go, here's 180, here's 200 right here. So this is the, uh, that's the direction we're going, and then, um, uh, then we're going to, that's the direction we're going, but the wind that we're creating is uh, going against us this way. So now we need to pick a scale. This. You know, here's where it'd be nice to have a ruler, you know, like this, you know, where you could just switch over and use this ruler. 
or if you only had something like this you could use these marks in here and then we'll just you know just arbitrarily let's call this um, let's call each of these little tick marks two knots so this is two four uh, uh, two knots yeah two four six and then seven so I could just put this dividers here and go two four six and halfway up there is seven so that's you know something like that's my seven knots of my boat speed okay so I'm gonna put that here and then here and then I'll just snug lining this up here I'll just this doesn't matter here but I just want to get a nice you know tidy little mark where that is now the winds coming in uh, the winds coming in from this direction from the west so I'll just come up here and I made this you know perpendicular sort of like that and then I'm gonna draw this line in so that's the wind coming in and that's 25 knots so again what do we have here 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 20 2 4 5 oh okay so I'm gonna put this here there's my 22 4 25 20 Two, four, that's 25. Again, this is a crude thing. One of these other scales with real numbers on it would be nicer, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to put that here and then bring that over here like that. And again, just to keep things tidy, I'm going to come up here and make a mark like this. Okay, so there's our triangle. And this we're coming back to here. Okay, so this is 7, right? This is 7, this is 25. So the first answer is what's the apparent wind speed? It's this distance from here to here, right? Apparent, that's that. So let's measure that. And then that is that distance right there. Now I go back to my, quote, mile scale here. I mean, yeah, lump knot scale. And this is 20. That's 20, 2, 4, 6, 8. It looks like it's just a hair over 28. And 28. Okay, let me. I gotta pause a minute. We got some visitors. Okay, I'm back. We had. We actually had a mail delivery at that at the moment with a, a little bit of noise in the background. All right. So what have I got here? Oh, okay. Measure this distance from here to here. Now I got to go on the scale. From here to that's 20, 2, 4, 6, 8. It looks like this is a hair over 28. You know, maybe 28.1. I don't know. I'm going to call it 28. Okay, that's 28's apparent win. 28.1. I don't know. Okay, then uh, what else do we need to know? Okay, so here's the angles, the apparent, here's the uh, true wind angle theta, here's the apparent wind angle, that was the second part of the question. So this one, we know, well, actually we know what this is. This is 20, or well, this is 020, and this is 090, so th this is 70 degrees. Now let's confirm that that's really 70. So we go here and put this on here, and you see, um, this 70 degrees. Now let's come down here. I may have to make my apparent wind angle a little longer. Goes over here like that. Okay. Now uh, where do I go? Okay. So I put this right here. And uh, okay. So 55, 56, 57, 58 degrees. So this equals 58 degrees. So the answer is that the apparent wind, the apparent wind, when this comes in, when this wind comes in at 25 knots, and we're staying on course 200, then we're gonna, then we're gonna see that true wind. That's gonna have a true wind angle of 70 degrees. It would be on the uh, starboard side, and then over here also, obviously on starboard side, at at apparent at 58 degrees. 58 degrees, we're gonna see 28.1 knots, and uh, that's the answer to the question by this method, which is which is easy. Okay, let's look at one last thing because here's a, okay, let me uh, get rid of some of this stuff here. Okay, let me come here and uh, bring in, uh, oh, oh, not that one. 
bring in OpenCPN. Now, let me just show one last way to solve problems like this. And this is uh, OpenCPN, and it's just a route tool, right? So you could take a route tool, and I've, I've done the problem here. Let's see what my, well, okay. So you see this line, look at the bottom. It's in direction, uh, read, uh, read in the bottom there, bottom line left. It's 020 and it's 70 miles. So in other words, I just took, a, I scaled up the, the, the wind speeds by 10 to put in miles. So that's that one. Then this one must be like 90 at 20, 250, you see. So that line there is the uh, parent wind, the true wind, rather, the true wind. And then down here is your answer. And it says, uh, oh, look, it got 28.2. Maybe I could have squeezed 0.2 out of that other one anyway. Let's go. Well, I have that uh, gone. Anyway, I didn't read that very carefully. We're, th that detail doesn't matter. And then the, that says um, that is uh, 256. Uh, 256. Uh, what, what is 256? Okay, that's that angle. So the other thing you can do with this, you could then just take the M key, you know, like here with the M, and then just go here and you know, just measure what's this bearing here. This is, see, this is like 76, 76, 77, and then this is 20. So it's got about, it's, it's claiming about 56. But you'd have to do it more carefully uh, to get, you know, to get, the, to get the same answer. So that shows about 56. I think we got 58. Uh, but anyway, look at the tools, how you do this. You would just go, oh, wait a minute, go up here to make a route. And then you would just start at any point, and then you got to come down till you get to 70, right? 70, that's times 10. And then this has to be... Um, well, this is going to be 200, right? So there would be 200. So I'm down here at uh, two, uh, 200, right? And then I want 70 at 200. So something like that, 70 at 200, there. Then you can just go back up here, hit this, and say yes. And then go over here. You want 25, 250, oop, 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 250 at 90. Well, again, you can... D different scales make this, okay, 250 at 90. And then here you've got your answer. Your answer then is um, uh, 28, uh, 20, now 28.3, 28.2, hit here, and say yes. And then just go back to see what direction that is. And it's, say, 76. So this actually, this solution would change our 58 to 50, something like 56. But anyway, that's a general answer, and there's a th three different ways to solve it. Um, and I want to stress just how important it is, just in your mind, when you know the wind's coming, not just to say, oh, you know, uh, be prepared, look ahead, and know exactly then what the heading, I mean, what the apparent wind angle is going to be and how strong it's going to be. That's the end of this note.